expeditions, and this is our journey to build a black bass legacy in Papua New Guinea. We're here at a desire to engage, learn and develop new relationships with the locals of Papua New Guinea. Relationships are very important in Papua New Guinea and there's no better way to learn about the black bass than learning from the custodians of the river. What we pride ourselves in is working with local communities, earning trust and getting permission to use their resources. We're authentic and immersive and this is the only way to go in the most remote fisheries left on the planet. We've got quite the uh, crowd here watching us rig up. We've got Mr. Gus from Alatau. He's the next uh, incumbent for governor. Governor. <laughs> One of our good friends here in uh, Middle Fly. Family that looks after us real good. We're going to shift some of our fuel down to base camp. And uh, our first stop is a special spot. We're not going to mention it on film because Everyone thinks they know where it is, but the fact is they don't. Let's go! Uh, this is our first bass of the campaign. I've just done a rough measurement. Look at our feet and, and look at the baby bath he's living in while we support him. Um, he's got to be 80 centimeters. I, I don't even want to hazard a guess how heavy he is. Incredible fish. Now what happened is this guy must have eaten it at about five foot down. He's hit it and he's come straight to the surface and oh, we were just absolutely blown away. All right, so uh, this is our first bass of our prospecting and a couple of weeks before clients come in, flying through uh, Lake Murray in Suki. I mean, look at this gorgeous fish. Um, it, it's come from under a log, chased the lure. Uh, we're, we're prospecting with bib lures right now um, to just determine where the fish are before we bring out fly. But man, we'd have one hell of a time landing this fish on fly. It's definitely 13 weight worthy. Um, so as you can see we've got this, this is probably the best uh, container that we could find in Papua New Guinea that we could get in a bass and it's still not quite big enough, uh, it's for a baby actually. So um, here she is, look at this beautiful, beautiful fish, oh look at that, this is what it's about and this is why people come to Papua New Guinea, look at this fish, I mean I used to be a saltwater man my whole life. And now I'm obsessed with these things. Okay, he's ready to go. Okay, buddy. Go on. And that is exactly why we do it. How's that for a first fish? First hour of the first day. Oh, I haven't even got my sunburn. All right, thanks, boys. And I'll say this to any angler. If you're not hitting logs, you. or you're not getting stuck on logs, you're simply not in the basket. Any bait fish, any prawn, you're gonna have a bad day. Okay. Beautiful. Well done, boys. Teamwork. We're out here trying to make our own black bass playbook, and we're very lucky to have received some advice from famous anglers such as Dean Butler. Johnny Mitchell and Ed Truder. Our goal is to develop a black bass baseline. And that means understanding bass, what they will do and where they will be 
and what their behaviours are. And in my opinion, that simply isn't out there. Typical environments for black bass. As you can see, we've got dirty fly river water pushing into this bigger creek, which you'll see out here. I wouldn't say tides, but we'll get lunar influence on, um, on the water up here, and it forces the river water up into these systems. Um, inside there, you'll see perfect black bass habitat. Shade, structure, logs, uh, ambush points, plenty of ambush points for um, black bass to hide behind, logs sit under, stay cool, um, bit of stability, and uh, wait for fish to come by. We're talking like snakehead, uh, climbing perch, um, all these, all sorts of different types of freshwater fish. There's even a freshwater garfish down there. Um, so th there's a lot to learn. coming from the fly river nice i almost missed that bite yeah is that for a paddle okay another fly caught barra it's taken a an old favorite another whistler fly with a rattle just get this uh get this fly out okay it's pinned him right in the corner i think what's happened is i've actually been a little slow on the strike and uh, he spat that fly out you can see he's actually bent it he's uh spat that fly out and uh, I've still managed to maintain a bit of, bit of contact with him and pinned him in the corner as it comes out. Oh, beautiful fish. Fly River Barra, it's come into the, into the freshwater creek. You can see, it hasn't been up in the swamp, it's not too dark, it's pretty silver. It's got some dark features to it, but it's definitely a Fly River Barra. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that mouth. Just inhales bait fish, inhales bait fish. Okay, let's get another one. The thing with fishing for black bass or fly fishing for black bass in general is you just never know when you're gonna get hit. So whilst we're fishing for black bass, I mean, you could get hit towards the top, however, more likely way deeper, but there's also barramundi you gotta encounter. Barramundi or barra, I mean, they're a welcome bycatch anytime you're fishing for black bass. Yeah. That's him. Wait. In. Yeah. Nice work, guys. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Look at that. It's just come out of the swamp. Those beautiful golden hues. Come back, my are Stunning. Uh, these barramundi are going to be smoked in uh, water lily leaf. On these expeditions we make the most of the local produce and what the community can uh, provide, so this is a staple part of our diet. It's like the fish are here but not ready to eat. I've seen plenty. Yeah. And here we're just working this slow edge, paddle power, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you just get blown away. And that's how quickly it can happen. Oh. He's broken me off. <laughs> Thank you. See, Gil. Gil. Oh. Nice one boys. Woo! 
another nice one. Beautiful. This is what you come to New Guinea for. Look at this. Look at this. They've only just started to come on the chew. Oh, beautiful dark coloration. Thank you, boys. So at this moment here, I mean, this is the culmination of everything we work to, and it's luck. This is the day we're going to refill our drum on the deck, and we decide to cast a fly. There he is. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. Come, 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 come. What, 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 what? Okay, wait, wait, wait. You keep it there, I'll bring it to you, okay? Okay. Upsy. Don't fall that way. Yes. Wait. Wait. I'll bring him to the next. Up. Woo! Fly, boys. Big bass on fucking fly. That's what it's about. Oh. Oh my goodness. Oh. This is, this is it. Oh, motherfucker. Oh, I'm shivering. You see how hard he took that? Yeah. You're with us right now, and uh, we've just caught one of the biggest bass I've ever seen on fly. I don't know, I've got no words. It's just, my boys have really pulled it together because, man, this is a shallow spot. Yes. Shallow spot. And this Ooh. one is the main spot. Oh. We're just going to keep him in the net till we're ready. You know, we, we don't want to stress him out too much. He's already been through a lot. It's a big bass. It's a big bass. Oy, 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 oy. That is a big bass. Look at this thing. Oh. This thing wants to eat me. I don't know if you've been following us, but, you know, flies are passion of ours and. Fishing for black bass, it's, it's not really a fly pursuit. Um, you know, the fish, the water's not always clean. Sometimes it's fast moving water, there's lots of logs. You'd think it'd be perfect, but a lot of these fish, they, they hang quite deep. And um, only during special circumstances do they come to the, the surface or at least a, a level that's practical for fly. So here, here it is. What a morning, first fish of the morning, or second fish actually, we've, uh, we've caught an oxide tarpon. And that was just the warm up. Look at this beautiful thing. Whoa! <laughs> oh. uh. hey brother. Thank you. Whistler, Dan Blanton, Whistler fly. You know, the, the video just doesn't do it justice how big this fish is. This fish is ginormous. Oh. Look at that. You know, I don't know if he's going to do it, but he, if you get close, he will try and bite you. And he's biting down on this lip grip, and that fly is just smoked. Baby, baby, buff, baby buff to put yeah. him in. So this is the best we can do. Oh, he's so big. So big. Oh, so big. Oh. This is our moment of joy. We've toiled for weeks for this fish. And you know, we've, we've hooked fish, plenty of fish, but you know, some are small and some, some you're, just, you're just not gonna win. This is the prize. More water. I usually chase big saltwater predators on top water jig and fly, but this is a new passion. <laughs> hey, you don't bite it. Whatever you are. It's time for you to go. Oh, that guy had me on the ropes. He had me on the ropes like a... I'm not going to say it, but you know what I want to say. That's what she ate. 
Hook's still okay. Uh, it's a Dan Blanton Whistler. Bit of weight, I think it's about 10 grams with a rattle. Ammo flies. Absolutely smoked it. We won that battle. Let's see how long we can keep this fly. Yeah, that's it. It's really a rock expedition now. We're going to push this boat that I'm standing on right now through about 200 metres of bush to access uh, an oxbow that hasn't seen the main river run for, I don't know, 30 years. The boys tell me there's monsters in there, black bass, barramundi. Um, I'm lost for words what these guys are doing for us. Look. They're carving out the bank so we can we can get the boat up and uh, I'll, I'll show you what track lies ahead soon. The last week's been a challenge. Um, we've, we've had beautiful black water, clean water, but with the coming up of the moon, full moon, it's just everywhere is flooding. Fly River's pushing into, into all the, the clean swamps, Strickland's pushing in everywhere. Um, we, we've had to really pull an ace out of our sleeve and uh, find a few areas that just no one has access to. So I feel really privileged to uh, be in this position where I've got all these boys um, on their traditional lands willing to let us into these oxbows. Um, they're protected and I can guarantee no other angler has been in there. So I, I, I can't even imagine what we're going to find. So it's now a rock expedition. Uh, uh, my last time to be here was uh, that's, uh, 19... Uh, uh, 92. That's really, it's uh, really isolated uh, because it has no uh, inlet and uh, outlet. It's uh, protected uh, because there's no dirty water getting into that swamp. But whatever is in there, they're all in there. They didn't even uh, allow anyone to get into this area. I mean, even if you wanted to, none of these other operations could get in here. Yes. I mean, look what we're going to go through just to get this dinghy up. They're building us, they're basically building us a boat ramp. But there's no vehicle, there's no winch, it's just pure PNG manpower. Watch out for crocs, boys. Yeah! Woo! I love PNG. I mean, anytime there's an initiative that, you know, benefits the community somehow, ooh, they're sharp. Don't want to be stepping on those. Every time there's a community effort or uh, initiative, I mean, everyone's involved. And as you can see, all these guys have come together just to help us catch black bass. I'm expecting huge things. We've been mostly saltwater guys our whole life. And now, now it's bass. You know, like I said, we're new in bass, but no one's going to do it like we do. New kids on the block, but we do it right. We fish for them different. Forget trolling. I mean, I, I don't hold trolling against anybody that wants to do it. It's just, it's not our style. Uh, my career has not been built to find mediocre fish or mediocre fishing and fishing locations. And uh, this is exactly why you book with rock guides. This reason. We're going to take you to the most amazing places any means possible. Oh, shit. <laughs> Now these are one of the issues you've got to deal with and it's uh, log jams after big spring tides. There's no other way to do this but by hand. I don't know if you can see the size of this log, it's absolutely ginormous. Yeah! This is what we have to deal with in uh, PNG, it's log jams. And we're just moving it with the dinghy. Uh, this happens with the spring tides. You still get the effect way up in the fresh water. You still get that water moving in, wanting to push in. And um, log jams are a fact of life. some of the fresh water you can get right out of the PNG swamp. Look at this. Beautiful. Ah, oh, that's it. Fine. Doesn't get better than that. Oh. We can? We can. 
Okay. Don't worry about me, I'll be down. Come, come slowly. Hey! We are going through. One of the great things about Papua New Guinea is the wild game. And I'll tell you what, there's no shortage of red meat. Here, one of our custodians is Gids. And he's talking about hunting deer, not anything else, I assure you. I told him, you come 60, I'm, I'm going to jump and kill them. <laughs> <laughs> today just taking a break boys are getting some coconuts when the fishing's tough it's always good to take a bit of a break now this is what I'm talking about as organic as it gets you know one of the under underrated benefits that we have here in uh, PNG and how we run is just organic and natural mate that is from yesterday's hunt that's pure bush pig and we've roasted it overnight this is my lunch today I've got a bit of barramundi, we've got coconuts. For me, it doesn't get any better than this. 